everyone, I'm Georgia and this is The Sound of Georgia. Today we're going to be looking at the beginning of Julie Andrews' film career. It's not what you think. I remember I saw a quiz ages ago, I think it was probably on Buzzfeed, it was something like that, and it was a how many of these Julie Andrews movies have you seen? And it had her entire filmography listed chronologically. But Mary Poppins was not the first on this list. But not because it didn't count TV movies. It did not. Cinderella was nowhere to be found on that list. Neither was One Special Night. But even without that, Mary Poppins was not the first movie on this list. Julie's first role was when she voiced the character of Princess Zayla in the English dub of the Italian animated film La Rosa de Baghdad. I remember being so shocked when I found out that Julie Andrews was in Shrek 2 because I honestly could not believe she would do an animated movie. It really surprised me that Julie would be doing anything other than live action. But her career did not start in live action. The original Italian film came out in 1949. The story of this film is basically Aladdin. Aladdin took a lot of influences from The Thief of Baghdad, and if those two titles don't tip you off that maybe these films are not that different, the title of the film in Austria was Aladdin und die Wonderlamp. I think it's pretty obvious what that translates to. The synopsis for this movie on IMDb talks very much about Zayla and how she has to thwart the evil Jafar in order to find a prince to marry. But in actuality, she's barely in the movie. Her singing parts last a total of 10 minutes combined. Here's what it's really about. It's about this snake charmer boy named Armin, who's totally in love with the princess Sailor. Sailor's just turned 13 and as such she has to choose a prince to marry. But the Sheik Jafar wants to rule the kingdom and so he tries proposing to her. He also has a magic ring and whoever's wearing it will fall in love with him. Armin and his magpie sidekick managed to steal the ring from Jafar and his magician sidekick Burke, but he ends up getting kidnapped and the ring finds its way back to Jafar, who then gives it to Zayla, who then falls in love with him. Armin goes to one of his friends who gives him Aladdin's magic lamp, and with the help of the genie inside goes back to the palace to defeat Burke. After that he leads Jafar over to the river forever and rescues Zayla. Surprise surprise she's in love with him too. They get married at the end. Okay, so it's not exactly Aladdin, but you can definitely see the similarities. Honestly, if you ask me to describe this movie, I'd say it's the story of Aladdin with the art style of Snow White and the voice of Mary Poppins. Literally. Or made by an Italian film company. For reasons. So 1949 was when the original Italian version came out, and it was dubbed into English in 1952 when Julie was just 17. And it was then that it was released under the English title The Rose of Baghdad. But it wasn't until a few years later that it became known as The Singing Princess. After Julie had gone to Broadway and made it big with The Boyfriend and My Fair Lady, the English film was released again under the title of The Singing Princess. And all the advertising really, really played up that Julie Andrews was in this. And then it was also re-re-released in 1967 when Julie was at the height of her film career. Oh but wait, we're not on to Mary Poppins next. We're not even on to Cinderella next. Julie's live action film debut was in High Tour. This came out in 1956 as a segment on Ford Star Jubilee and also starred Bing Crosby. And it was a musical version of Maxwell Anderson's 1936 play of the same name. He had been considering making a musical version of the play since 1949. And Julie ended up getting involved because Bing had seen her in The Boyfriend. And yet he was told she was 24 years old because there was worry that he would not want to work with her if he knew how young she was. She had turned 20 a month before they started filming. I don't know whether he ever found out her actual age, but at the end of the shoot he gave her a little pearl encrusted angel saying, Julie, thanks, Bing. As for what High Tour's about, Bing Crosby plays this guy named Van Van Dorn. He owns a summit, which is called High Tour, that looks out over the Hudson River. His girlfriend Judith is desperate for him to sell it so they can have a more financially stable life. And one day they get into a bit of a fight about it. So while she runs off, he stays and gets trapped in a rock slide. And then that night, the ghosts of a whole crew of 17th century Dutch sailors appear. They all supposedly died there in a shipwreck 300 years ago. So he bumps into Julie's character Lisa 
and they kind of fall in love. But obviously it can't last because she's a ghost and by the time morning comes she's left. Van Dorgen goes back to Judith and he knows what to do about all his problems with her. Also there's subplots where a couple of real estate agents also get trapped in the rock slide and Judith meets one of the other ghosts and honestly my first thought when I saw this one was I wonder what it would look like if they made it today. I wonder how they'd make the ghosts look. Because as a black and white TV movie from 1956, the only real indication you get that half the cast are ghosts is from the story. They don't look any different whatsoever. But I always wondered what they would look like if you could make them look different. As I just said, it was a TV movie and it's sometimes called the first TV movie. It did not do well critically. According to Julie, the reviews were lukewarm, saying things like all the good parts of the play were lost as they translated it for TV. Julie also thought her performance was very stilted. But come on, she was 20 years old, it's her first time in front of a camera, and she's working with Bing freaking Crosby. Anyone would be terrified. The songs are pretty nice though. Music was written by Arthur Schwartz, and the lyrics were written by Maxwell Anderson himself. And it was only a few years ago that they finally released it on CD. It might have been 2016, which you would obviously probably count several years ago now, but that would have been 60 years after this premiered. So in the grand scheme of things, very very recent. The year after that was when she did Cinderella, and then her next one was Mary Poppins in 1964. So according to a filmography on Julie Andrews Online, that is the timeline. And Julie Andrews Online is about as official as you can get for an unofficial fan site. And that's everything I've got for today guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know, did you know about any of these movies? Have you seen any of them? Feel free to like and subscribe, stay safe, and I'll see you in my video next time. So long, farewell!